Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is February the 4th, 2022. Another wild week for the S&P 500. We saw some crazy post-earning price action from Facebook and Amazon. Facebook down more than 25% and Amazon up more than 13% from the earning reports. Is it time to buy this market once again? In this S&P 500 analysis, we'll look at the market sentiment, its internals, the price action of the S&P 500 and the other market indexes along with gold, silver, oil, US dollar, and the 10-year yield and see what they are telling us. Stay tuned. Looking at the weekly uh, chart of the S&P 500, you can see the range here last week, it was 181 points and it gained uh, you know, 69.1.55%. It booked this one time framing down, and right now it is starting a one time framing up. In addition, it also came back into this price channel. So, right now, we'll basically be watching for the coming week is that would it be able to stay inside of this channel and possibly get above this moving average and then work itself up back to the upper channel area? Or would it, uh, you know, break below and get back below the uh, channel and start coming back down? and essentially come back and test this low here somewhere near that 4200 level. Now looking at the VIX and the uh, put call ratio of the sentiment, we see that the uh, VIX is still inside of this uh, 2030 zone, although it is in the uh, lower portion of this zone here. But nevertheless, it is above 20, it's sitting at 23.22 on Friday. And also the put call ratio has been uh, fluctuating inside of this 0.75 and earlier a couple of weeks ago we actually saw it went above one for the first time since uh, many many months ago right so uh, right now it's still sitting above this 0.75 so what this tells us is that the market participants are still very cautious and uh, they are fear and also they are not putting on risk as a matter of fact they are probably putting on more hedges to protect eventual downside and here looking at the up down volume ratio for the new york stock exchange you can see that it's kind of fluctuating between up and down so it kind of tells us that the market really are not very decisive right now we're trying to figure out wh which way to go right so like today you know we have a up down volume ratio in favor of the up volume but yesterday it was in favor of the down volume and on Wednesday, when we have this huge day up, you know, uh, you know, the up down volume ratio was actually negative. So it was in favor of the down volume. Similarly, for the advanced decline, you can see that the advanced decline has been running negative in the last three days. In other words, there are more declining issues than advancing issues. So again, we are seeing a little bit of a negative divergence between the uh, advanced decline and the up-down volume ratio to the S&P 500 cash index. And looking at the New York Stock Exchange, new high, new low, although we are not seeing a uh, humongous number of uh, stock making new low, so we probably have seen the peak over here, back here on uh, uh, you know, January the uh, 24th. But once again, it is start to creeping up again. So today with the uh, S&P 500, up uh, 23 point or half a percent uh, there were uh, 265 stock made new 52 week low and only 69 stock made new 52 week high and as you can see from this cumulative ad line here for the new york stock exchange the ad line is uh, trending downward while the s p 500 actually close up and moving upward so we are seeing this negative divergence here. So I wouldn't be surprised if once again, we're going to see a little bit of a pullback from the S&P 500 to get back in sync with the advanced decline line. And here looking at the NASDAQ uh, market, here's the uh, NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100 closed almost 200 points, 193 points on Friday at 1.33%. And that's why we do to uh, Amazon blowout uh, earning report that reported after the market closed yesterday. But in regardless, we are still seeing some negative internals. Although on Monday, we did see a 
huge, you know, 10 to 1, almost 11 to 1 in favor of the up volume on that Monday move. But since then, you know, we still also look, uh, saw a uh, five and a half to one on the downside on uh, Thursday. Uh, the advanced decline was also uh, uh, minus uh, to almost 2,800 on Thursday. Although today it got a little positive, uh, 1,252 more advancing issue than declining issue. And also the up-down volume ratio was running 2.4 to one in favor of the up volume. And also the new high, new low for the NASDAQ market believe that this could be the peak of uh, the uh, the new high, new, new low on the downside here. Again, on January 24th, we see there were uh, 1,746 more new low than new high. And there were 1,764 stock made new 52-week low on that day. And since then, it's been coming down, although today it... Uh, Popped up a little bit. There were uh, 246 stock make new 52 week low versus 44 stock make new 52 week high. So here on the NASDAQ advanced decline line, the cumulative AD line, we are not seeing the uh, negative divergence as we observe from the uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line versus the SP 500. Now, let's take a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500. Remember, we were talking about this trend line here. We want to see the price to uh, get back above this trend line. And we we're talking about this pivot high here at 45.45. As you can see, on Wednesday, it uh, poked above that. And then on Thursday, we had a uh, pullback on that. Came back below this trend line. And then today, it's tried to close above this trend line. So essentially, it is still high to, you know, decide which way to go and bouncing around inside of this Fibonacci retracement. So next week, we're going to keep an eye on this um, level once again at 45.45 to see what it may be able to stay above that and then pushes up to get above this 4,600, essentially to get above this 618, 46.13 and see what it be able to move, continue to move up. And then uh, taking a look at the uh, 4700 or this pivot high here, somewhere around this uh, 4750. So those are the upside uh, level to keep an eye on. And then on the downside, if it pulls back and dip below this 38.2, once again, below the 4500 or below this 4485, then we'll extend to the watch here to see what it be able to, you know, come on here and test this area here around this 4300 level you know make its way down uh toward this uh, 4300 level and if it doesn't hold this level then we're essentially looking for the possibility of this low get tested and here on the nasdaq 100 daily chart we're basically watching this 15,345 and see what it be able to get above that and as you can see after wednesday this little bit of a you know hangman uh uh, candle here it pulled back and actually gapped down on thursday so right now it's essentially sitting above this uh, zone here this little balance area so we're going to keep an eye on it next week to see what it come back down and get back inside of this zone essentially dip below the 14,500. and if it uh, does get back in here then we basically are looking at these lows here for possibility of getting retested and this uh, low here is somewhere around the uh, 13,800, 13,900 level. And this way here, 13,730, 720. Right, so that is the downside. But the upside is basically to see what it be able to get back above this 15,345. Essentially getting back above this 382 level here and also this pivot high. And for the Russell 2000, we're watching this level here, 2075, to see would it be able to get back above this and possibly move back into this balance area here at the uh, 2134. As you can see, it is continued to try to come down and possibly retest this area here and keep an eye on this 1935 once again to see would it come back down and test this and see what it holds. And if it doesn't hold, then we be uh, watching for the possibility of making a move down toward this 1715. 
And for the Daojong Transportation, the Daojong Transportation did get back above this uh, support term resistance, and it did uh, came back up. But on Friday, also uh, you know just moved right back down and found support near this uh, fifteen thousand sixty seven. So we're going to keep an eye on it to see would it be able to once again push us back up and make its way back above the uh, sixteen thousand level. And if it uh, unable to do that, then we are essentially watching this, uh, you know, fifteen thousand area to get taken down and make itself down to this fourteen thousand five hundred and possibly come down and test this low here, somewhere around thirteen thousand nine sixty. And for the Dow Jones Industrial, the Dow Jones Industrial continue to stay inside of this uh, channel here. So right now we're still watching to see would it be able to get above this thirty five thousand six twenty five or would it come back down and retest this lower uh, trend line of this channel uh, somewhere around thirty four thousand five hundred so those are the two key levels to watch if it could break above this thirty five six twenty five then we're essentially watching for a possibility of coming up to this thirty six thousand five hundred. But if it uh, breaks below this trend line here and dip below the 34,500, we could be looking something down here at this 33,000 level. And for the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, it uh, came back into this balance area right now and sitting inside this, uh, just uh, dipping uh, you know, a little bit around this 16,708. So we're going to see what it be able to come back out and get back above this 16,932. And if it's uh, unable to do that, then we're essentially looking for a retracement back down to this 16,094, the other side of this balance area. Now let's take a look at the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. And look at this uh, composite profile here. If this is the latest uh, composite point of control. And this is somewhere around the uh, 449, 450 area. As you can see that it came down to this 444 and got a bounce off from it today. And right now it is, you know, toward the, toward the close, it uh, pulled back uh, be, below this uh, composite point of control. So for the uh, coming week, we want to see will it be able to come down and still get a support here at the 445 or will it dip inside of this zone? And if it does, then we're basically looking for this thing to come back down to somewhere around this 426 area, this composite area, you know, composite uh, uh, value area low. But if it's able to uh, come back up and push us into this 457 and uh, 458, that's essentially the composite value area high, then we could be looking at something going up toward this 465 level here essentially coming up, try to come up to this zone here, this high volume zone. And for the QQQ, we are looking for the QQQ to possibly make back up to the uh, 370 level and get above this uh, composite value area low at 372.34. So right now it seems to be uh, pulling back and we'll see what it be able to hold above this, uh, essentially this 330, 355 area. And if it can hold support here, then we're essentially looking for this thing to come back into the zone. And this, uh, you know, 340 area would be the uh, next potential target level to keep an eye on for the QQQ. And for the Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM, see we got a uh, low bounce off of uh, 195 on Friday. Right now we're going to see what it get up back above this 201 and a quarter or so this composite value area low and get back up above this 205, 20450 area and try to move back up to this 21750 level composite point of control. But if it is unable to uh, get back inside of this value area here, this composite value area, and if it pushes down to this 195 and break below it, then we'd be uh, looking at the possibility for it to come back down to this level here between the, uh, you know, somewhere at this 189 area. 
And here, looking at this 10-year yield chart here, you see on Friday, really surge up after the uh, non-farm payroll, the employment report came out. That was much better than expected. I think it was somewhere over 400,000. And the uh, market was expecting somewhere around 160,000 or something like that. So definitely the market is uh, pricing in a rate hike relatively soon. And here is this cup and handle pattern, that small one. And if it's a 100% major move, then we'd be talking about this 2.5%. But if it's this uh, bigger cup and handle, then we essentially looking at the 618, somewhere around 2.5% as well. So in regardless what, uh, which one of these patterns this price broke out from, we essentially are looking at this level here for the 10-year uh, yield. And looking at the US dollar here, we see that the uh, US dollar came out of this uh, this zone here to dip below this 95.70. So we'll see uh, will it continue to move down to this uh, 94 area or it will come back in to this 95.70 next week. Now looking at oil, we see uh, crude oil finally uh, move about this uh, 90.43. As a matter of fact, it uh, moved about $92 today and it closed at 92.31. And the high was... Uh, See here, 93 and 17 cents. So we'll see what uh, oil continue to move up to this uh, century mark or would it uh, pull back and uh, test this 80, uh, $85 area. But uh, with the uh, strength in the, uh, the cool oil, most likely uh, this thing probably will continue to march up toward that $100 level. Silver is still holding on to this uh, area here somewhere near the uh, 22 and a half. So we'll see, would it be able to get back above this 2272 and uh, move its way back up toward the uh, 2470? Or would it break this support and start moving back down to uh, test uh, the $19 level? Gold is still holding on to this uh, 1804 area. So right now we're going to see, would it continue to move up and take out this 1846? then, uh, you know, get above this trend line and possibly move toward this uh, 1923. But if it uh, starts chopping around and break this trend line, then we could be uh, looking at gold retracing back down to the 1716. But right now, I'm more tend to uh, look at gold uh, moving higher rather than uh, moving below this trend line. But hey, anything is possible, right? Now looking at this ES uh, market profile chart here, remember I was talking about this balance area right up here earlier and also a balance area down here. Now as you can see, uh, this area kind of got filled in by these uh, four days of uh, balancing here. So right now it appears to be this one gigantic balance area. So we'd be uh, looking at prices to fluctuate inside of this uh, balance area. And if next week we see the price come down to the uh, 4283, this poor low here, somewhere you know, down at this poor low, essentially getting below this 4300, then we could possibly see a break below this balance area and come down and test this Monday low. So that's one possibility there. The other possibility is for this thing to bounce back up and then break above this uh, 4,600, essentially take out this pull high at 4,603. And we'd be uh, looking at this thing coming up to possibly get back above the 47. And then we'd be talking about all time high once again. So those are the two possible scenario to keep an eye on for the ES uh, for the coming week. In summary, the market is still very volatile. We saw some large cap tech stock traded like some cryptocurrency. The market participants are still fearful and uncertain. Market internals are also sending unsettling messages. One probably should move to the sideline and be a spectator instead of being a speculator until we get some clarity from the market. So be sure to smash the thumbs up to help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.